Homeless Tutorials. Control your own reality. Hey guys, welcome back to Homeless Penthouse. Calero here today to give you guys a Bosco tutorial on how to edit your pictures for any social media platform. I particularly use this for Instagram, if you guys didn't know. Um, maybe, maybe my Instagram will be on this video. Sure. Edit my Instagram pictures personally on Bosco. That is what works best for me, and it's the most convenient because it's a free app on your phone. A lot of people, like professional models and photographers, will use Adobe Lightroom to edit their photos. Typically, you would have to download that on a MacBook or whatever type of computer you have. And it also is not a free service. You have to purchase that. It's like how you have to purchase Adobe Photoshop or anything like that. But this is basically a pocket size light on for your phone like the app which i think you guys will find pretty useful if you do edit pictures on a regular basis or even not like if you just edit pictures here and there this is a good app to know about and how to use um so yeah that's pretty much my intro and today i'm gonna go in the app and i'm gonna screen record it so you guys can see everything that i'm doing i'm gonna pick a random picture to just edit and show you guys how some of the tools work and what their purpose is and that's about it we're just gonna go over them one by one and hopefully by the end of this video you guys have a good grasp on how to edit pictures okay so basically i'm gonna go in bosco and i'm gonna edit a picture of myself for you guys and just go through the settings and teach you guys a little bit of what each setting does and how you can use it to change effects within your picture. Bosco has preset filters that you guys can use. So if you use preset filters anywhere else, like Instagram, Snapchat, or anything like that, and you like how preset filters look, you'll like what Bosco looks like, or their filters, because they have pretty different filters that are not on Instagram and stuff like that. But I personally don't like using filters because anybody could use the same filters. I'm going to use the adjust tool first. The adjust tool is basically just a crop tool to help you crop your image to the size you want to focus on or whatever area. They do have preset crop frames if you guys need a certain dimensions and sizes that you can click on. So I found that pretty cool, but I never really use them. And then this exposure. Exposure is basically the brightness of your image. So if you move it positive, it'll make it brighter. If you move it down, it'll be dimmer. That type of situation. I'm gonna brighten this image to like a four. The next tool we're gonna go over is the contrast tool. The contrast tool is how rich the color is. So if you move it up positive, it'll make the color more bold. If you turn it down, it'll make the color more washed out and faint looking. I'm gonna turn this down. And I'm gonna use another tool later to add color back into this image. But right here with the contrast, I'm just gonna make it faint right now. I'll show you, I'll show you guys when I get to that stuff. But I'm gonna go negative six on contrast. The sharpen tool is basically just to sharpen the image so you guys can see smaller details within the image. So, like, if you have, like, little details in an image, like, I don't know, belt loops and stuff you want to see. I don't know. Just, like, little tiny details. That'll help you. But here, I'm not going to use it because of the quality of this image already. So, clarity is basically the sister to sharpen. It just intensifies bigger details, not smaller details in the image. So, if you have, like, washed out larger details, it'll intensify that for you. Um, I don't think I need that here either, so I'm just going to skip that as well. The next step is saturation. This is the step that I was going to tell you guys about to bring the color back into the image. So saturation is basically the color intensity, for this. it just makes it more colorful. So I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. No. Oh no, I turned it up all the way. How did it slip from saturation? And then the next tool is the tone tool. The tone tool is basically the tone refers to the different layers of light in the image. It'll help you like change the intensity of the highlights and the shadows in the image. Here, the highlights are already the brightest they are because we turned the brightness all the way up on exposure. And I don't really want to intensify the shadows, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to skip this up as well. White balance is basically have to do with color balance and the warmth in the picture. The warmer a picture is, it's more orange. The colder, it's more blue. That's just how it is. 
So basically, I'm gonna make this picture colder. So I'm gonna do temperature negative six, and I'm gonna do a color positive six. And you guys see what it looks like before? It looks like right now. And then we're gonna move to the skin tone tool. Now, the skin tone tool is not a tool that will blur your skin or erase anything off your skin. It won't do anything like that. The skin tone tool is mainly used to correct red or green tones in certain images on people's skin. So, like, if I took a picture with a, like, some type of... If you, okay, here's a good reference. If you normally take pictures or if you've ever taken pictures in your life in a parking garage, I know it looks normal at the time, but when you go back and edit those pictures, the pictures will make your skin look so green because of how the lighting is in parking garages. So this would be a tool to help you with that one. And it will just correct it all the way. Usually, I'll turn this all the way up. And you guys can see that it'll take a little bit of redness on my skin. It'll make you notice colors that you never even paid attention to in a like regular image straight off the camera. But yeah, I'm gonna use that. Um, Vignette is basically a tool to help you darken the edges of the image and make you focus more on the center of the image. Um, I really like how this tool looks sometimes. And the grain tool is basically a tool to help you add like a not a digital, I'm sorry, a like film grain on digital images. And it'll just make the image look more authentic, at least to me. This is what I use instead of like blurring my skin and stuff. I just throw it right on pictures that they look ugly, I don't care. And I like how the ethereal feel it gives with the grain on it. But today I'm not gonna add any grain on it because of how it already looks. This picture looks super grainy this time around. But yeah, y'all see how grainy that is? I'm gonna turn it all the way down. The next tool is the fade tool. The fade tool adds a washed out look to photos. So if you want to wash your whole entire photo out, you can. As you all see, I just did that. So you guys can see exactly how the setting works. But um, this actually looks really vintage. Like me adding this to it makes it look like a Polaroid image almost. So if you guys are looking for that type of look, I just kind of showed you how to do it a little bit. Um, you can change the color in saturation or the white balance like we just talked about. But I'm about to show you guys another way on Vasco how to add color to photos as well. I might use this, but I'm only going to use it up to a 2. So positive 2 on fade. And then we have the split tone. Okay, so split tone basically deals with the colors and the shadows and the highlights. If I'm not wrong, that's exactly what it is. And it adds colors to shadows and highlights. Now, if you already messed with the shadows and highlights earlier in another tool, I believe it is the tone tool that you can use. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure. And I already have blue here. I'm just going to play around with some colors and see what it like kind of affects it. And a good, another thing to think about if you want to get into editing photos is to kind of study a color wheel and see what are complementary colors and contrast colors. Those will help you along the way of editing photos too when you're playing with colors in your edit settings because that'll help you learn what colors to put together to make different things pop and like it looks like shadows is the best option for me to edit this picture with because sometimes it depends on what photo you're editing it varies but sometimes highlights are more prominent in photos than shadows but depending on either or is what's going to be your best bet when changing the color whatever is majority in your photo that you're working with but it looks like i have more shadows and highlights in this photo I like how the orange looks, but pro tip, earlier when I was playing with the white balance, I changed the temperature all the way down to blue, and blue and orange are complementary colors, so it's probably why I find these pleasing to the eye. Yeah, we can do the highlights orange too. I like how this turned out, um, some of y'all won't, but y'all see the dramatic difference in this photo of rip on how it looks. I really like this edit. This is something that I would use for my Instagram. This is the kind of theme or vibe that I'm normally going for. Um, when I post pictures, I like a more ethereal, vintage, Polaroid type look, I guess you could say. More orangey, not so like clean and Instagram influencer-y, 
if that makes sense. Um, if this isn't your editing style, that's fine too. But I thought I'd just let some people know how exactly I get my photos to look like this and meet this aesthetic. And yeah, stay tuned for future Bosco tutorials and I'll teach you guys how to get different vibes and use other things. And Homeless tutorials. Control your own reality.